Hi there, Scott Moyes here from Capro Systems. In this video today, I'm going to go through the kind of onboarding process of Fusion 360 from the point of view of a student or an educator logging into Fusion 360 for the first time and give you a quick tour around the software and the user interface and give you some pointers of where to go to get help and get started and tutorials and all that sort of stuff. So, in a previous video, I went through how to sign up for a Fusion 360 education account and I'll include uh, a card to that video um, in the top corner of this video right now. Assuming you've gone through that process you can now sign in um, to your account that you created using the credentials, using the email you used and the password you set up. You have to agree to the terms of service and then Fusion will go about setting up the rest of your account and configuring Fusion 360 for first time use. Okay, just click OK, continue on that. Okay, so you can see that we've signed in. Um, this is this should show your first and last name for when you set up your account. On the left hand side here you've got the data panel, so if you click on that you can see um, your first projects loaded. Um, you can upload um, files, so maybe you've downloaded something from Thingiverse or um, GrabCAD.com or you've got some previous designs from Tinkercad or from SolidWorks or, or some other um, third part, or maybe even um, SketchUp. So you can upload some of those files into here and, and organize them into files, into folders. and Or you can come up a level and create some new projects. So you might have some projects that you invite students to to participate in um, a particular project. There's some samples in here, so well worth exploring. And yeah, so to create a new project, click on new project, pick the name, and go forward from there. So if we just close, you can also search through all of your different projects for for files and specific keywords. Okay, so we'll just click on the X up in the top corner here to close the data panel to get us some more real estate. And I just want to talk a little bit about this getting started here. So, um, in this part of the world, Australia, New Zealand, odds are you're going to be using millimeters as the defaults, and so that is the default here. So we'll just leave it as it is, um, and then you can choose um, what CAD experience you want. So if you're completely new to CAD um, or you've used previous Autodesk products, then I recommend you just leave it as new to CAD. Um, if you've used um, SolidWorks previously then you've got the opportunity to switch over to SOLIDWORKS here um, and try out those settings that will be more familiar to you for, for panning and orbiting in 3D um, all that sort of stuff okay so with this setting here you can see this confirmation that if you use the middle mouse button um, which is, um, you, is just clicking and holding down the scroll wheel on your mouse then it will pan. Um, you can scroll the scroll wheel backwards and forwards to zoom in and out instead of scrolling up and down on a web page, for example. And then if you hold down shift and then click and hold the um, scroll wheel, then you can orbit around in 3D. And then there's a little bit of a just kind of a kickstart just to um, encourage you to start creating some kind of content straight away and a link through to the sketch tutorial. So in this case here, I just want to create, if you click on the drop down, create a sketch, have a look at for circles, and we'll create a center point circle. Which plane do we want it on? Uh, we'll put it on this XY plane here. Left click to set the center of the circle. Left click again to confirm the size of your circle. And then you can go and click sketch. And we're looking for dimension. And then left click once to select the circle and then left click a second time to place the dimension and type in the diameter that you want. With the circle fully constrained, as in it's tied down to the origin of the sketch at 0, 0 and the diameter is defined as 120 millimeters, we can set about extruding it. So select extrude from the ribbon, select the profile that it's asking here, if we hover um, just pause the cursor, you get a tooltip, select sketch profiles or planar faces to extrude. So we need to select the profile created by the circle. 
and then we can hold down shift and middle mouse button and orbit around and then grab this arrow and drag it out and we can type in a dimension here so we can go 70 mils and we've now got a 70 mil long 120 mil diameter cylinder we can close this off and now let's just talk a little bit um, about navigating around so as we touched on before in the getting started panel we just closed if I hold down the middle mouse button so hold down my scroll wheel I can now pan if I hold down shift in the middle mouse button then I can orbit and then I can scroll in and out with my mouse wheel okay now something important to take note here is that Fusion 360 will zoom to and away from your cursor so if I want to um, zoom in closer at this section of the model I can zoom in here and then zoom away from there and then move over to this side of the model and zoom in here and move away from there okay so it's a really handy thing to know when you're just trying to get around and navigate around your model the other important thing is your view cube up here if you mouse over this you'll see the house icon appear if we select that then it will go back to home which is especially handy if you've lost um, you know you're orbiting around and your model's just gone straight off your screen and you don't know where it is which is quite a common issue for beginners um, just click on the home button and everything will come back and reset to exactly where you need it to be down the bottom you've also got some options in here for orbiting panning um, looking at so you can click on a face and it will look straight at it we'll go back to home um, and some display settings by default underneath grids and snaps the layout grid will be turned on okay so a lot of people um, don't like that um, I personally don't it does give you kind of some kind of uh, you know some kind of reference for um, where X and Y is and where the ground is but I like to turn it off um, it's also nice having shadows and reflections turned on as well so under effects you can turn on ground shadow turn on ground reflection on and off okay an important setting for some people will be the environments um, style so under display settings here um, you've got the environment um, flyout menu and you can switch between different colored environments so depending on you know what you, you might be colorblind so you might need a high contrast or a low contrast environment tranquility blue and um, infinity pool got those the wrong way around but yeah you can see the difference here is quite dramatic so for some people this would be um, a very good environment to work in I personally prefer the photo booth I think it gives me a good balance between all of the different environments so on the on the left hand side here um, on the ribbon you've got this drop down which will actually switch you between different environments now model is where you're going to be working most of the time um, patch would be for surfaces uh, if you want to create photorealistic renderings then you'd create you'd use the render workspace you can create animations and exploded views and save them out as videos in here which is uh, pretty helpful and then the cam environment for toolpathing and creating drawings simulation if you want to do any finite element analysis and predict the behavior of your models under load then you could uh, do that in here as well if you wanted to okay we should just talk a little bit about what's going on up here in the um, top right hand corner so you'll get notifications occasionally um, and you can read you know it's Autodesk want to tell you there's an update or maybe there's been an outage or something like that and you also get that in here in the under job status so if the servers are down and um, Fusion defaults into working in offline mode then you'll get a notification up here uh, telling you about the progress of them fixing the servers and, and whether you're actually working online or offline you can access your Autodesk account here um, preferences so you can go through and change a whole bunch of different stuff now one of the things that you might want to change is um, the default orbit type from being constrained so you can see down here and this icon shows that the uh, 3D orbit is constrained around an axis um, I personally recommend setting that to free orbit um, and some people um, need to reverse the zoom direction so when you scroll away with your mouse wheel um, do you expect the model to go away from you or come towards you again I personally have it set to um, reverse zoom direction but you guys should just try that out see what you're comfortable with 
Um, and then also another important point to point out is by default, um, the default modeling orientation is Y up. Now, um, if you're if you're doing CNC work, you're working on routers or 3D printers, and you want to understand where Z is relative to your model, then setting Z up is a good default to apply. This particular um, setting doesn't apply until the next time you create a new document. So at the moment, you can see that the front view and Z are aligned. If I create a new design, now we can see that the Z relates to the top of the view cube, not the front. Okay. Those settings get synced to the cloud. Um, so if you open up and log in um, under your account on a different PC, then those settings will automatically apply. Now, just to end this, just to give you a bit of, um, uh, just to, to empower you guys to go off and learn some stuff yourselves. Um, if you click on the help drop down in the top right hand corner, you've got access to various resources. Okay, so you can just search the help right here, or you can select learn uh, Fusion 360. Um, or yeah, the getting started just brings this dialogue up here again. Okay, um, but Learn Fusion 360 will take you to a website with a whole heap of content, with videos, and to teach you about nearly every aspect of the product. Okay, so if you went through from beginning to end and understood it all, you'd be um, you know an advanced user of Fusion. So yeah, just get started with the foundational concepts, and um, at the end of the day, with any 3D modeler like this. The most important thing you get right and understand is creating stable sketches, fully constrained, so they don't wander off when you into different locations in space when you make changes. You know, that's it's all about that foundation. Right, so thanks for tuning in. I know this was a bit of a long one, but I think we um, it was important to cover a whole bunch of those kind of like basics to give you a good foundation moving forwards. Thanks for tuning in. And we'll catch you again in another video in the future. Cheers. Bye.